This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Megan Shepard. It's great to have you with us. Topping news, a major boost coming for this island's religious tourism sector. Hundreds of delegates are expected on Grand Bahama next week, November 11th through the 14th. The conclave is said to be the premier event for a new Providence-based church with a global mission. Joan Davis Rowe reports. The island of Grand Bahama poised for yet another historic event and a much-needed economic infusion as for the first time a global leadership conference hosted by Bahamas Faith Ministries International will be held here on this northern island. Senior Vice President of BFM Dr. Richard Pinder traveled to Grand Bahama from the nation's capital to make the announcement. This is a very historic occasion, but it's an occasion that we believe whose time has come. And we are looking forward to in the next week, a very important, life-changing event here in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Global Leadership Summit 2013. Our theme this year is a very important one. It's character, the moral force of leadership. We need true leadership in our government, business, schools, civic institutions, youth communities, religious organizations, homes, disciplines of the law, medicine, science, sports, and in fact, in every arena of life. When delegates from 30 nations around the world expected on Grand Bahama for this Global Leadership Conference, this island's economy is expected to be impacted significantly. According to Pastor Larry Russell and General Manager of the Grand Lucayne Resort, Benjamin Davis, local industries and stakeholders, including this island's leading resort, will also benefit from the conference. Organizers say the event will particularly provide a golden opportunity for transportation professionals. There are going to be tours around the island, uh, scheduled tours for the delegates to, to see the Grand Bahama market, to understand what we do here. They'll be visiting the, the, uh, the, the container port, the shipyard. They will see uh, 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 Borco. They will see this, this, this island which will stimulate interest in maybe purchasing land, uh, maybe a, 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 an individual, who, a, a hotel a operator, owner, might be interested in, in putting a, a boutique hotel in Grand Mamba. So Dr. Monroe uh, is very interested in bringing uh, economic growth and relief to this island. I spoke with the taxi cab drivers and met with them, and they are excited. They are looking forward, and you know, we could have hired a bus to move our delegates from the airport to, to the hotel. Dr. Monroe said, no, I want to make a difference in the community. We look forward to hosting the event, making sure that everything goes well. That's what we're here to do. Um, and, you know, many of my managers will be attending the event because we're all leaders. I would easily put it in probably in excess of around $200,000 or more uh, for the short period of time. I think that's significant. It goes into the pockets of everybody. Meanwhile, President of the Grand Bahama Tax Union, David Jones, says they are thrilled about word of increased business. We feel ecstatic. We want to thank Dr. Miles Manuel, uh, all his officers and members, for having a vision like no other. We're going to put our best foot forward. We're going to be dressed in our uniforms, our taxis are going to be nice and clean, air conditioned. And again, we want to openly thank him because he's saying this kind of vision, if you were to put persons in taxis, then a lot more persons could probably boil their parts, feed their families. John Davis Roll, Southern S Network News. The Grand Bahama Port Authority issuing a statement today on the Dubai trade mission. The Port Authority is a part of that official trade mission to Dubai that is led by Minister of Foreign Affairs and Immigration, the Honorable Fred Mitchell. Port President Ian Rolls says, as a private sector partner, the Port Authority is keenly interested in attracting much-needed new capital and investment to the Bahamas, particularly those that allow the Port to introduce Grand Bahama to an even wider audience of foreign investors who are excited about partnering in the future. Roll says it has been two weeks of intensive consultative talks and it follows on the heels of a diplomatic trip made late last year by Minister Mitchell. The trade mission is focusing on cultural tourism, ports development, financial services, the environment, telecommunications and technology. The Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darvel, is also a member of that delegation. 
Stay with us, The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Public and private sector partners joining forces last week to showcase a gamut of career opportunities. Officials say as the government continues to promote efforts to diversify the economy, they have great expectations about this island's future workforce. John Davis Rowell has that report. The island of Grand Bahama is said to be well on its way to producing the next generation of skilled workers. Organizers of the highly anticipated Technical and Maritime Career Fair are boasting of a successful event. The two-day expo targeted junior high school students from both the private and public institutions. According to Dr. Cecil Thompson, the collaborative effort brought together principals, guidance counselors, industry leaders, all attempting to positively impact the lives of this island's youth. Students would have a better idea of careers and in industries and uh, we hope that it will motivate and inspire them to do what they need to do as early as the ninth grades. Make sure they're successful in their BJCs and in the senior school that they're successful in their BGCSEs and these excellent opportunities will be waiting for them. Deputy Director of Education on Grand Bahama, Sandra Edgecombe, says exposing local students to vast opportunities is essential in preparing them for the real world. And they've come in, many of them never realizing the opportunities or the work behind the big companies because they've never even visited it, even if they have family members who work there. And so it's an eye-opening experience for them. The involvement of a Nassau-based company, Lowell J. Mortimer Maritime Academy, she says, was also a major achievement. It speaks volumes of the partnership that we have been able to establish here on Grand Bahama. Um, 23 groups and companies are here, represented, set up, ready to go, giving their time and showcasing their companies. We couldn't ask for a better relationship. Joan Davis Roll, S Network News. Art lovers can view the work of two of Grand Bahama's top artists. For the next two weeks, art pieces will be on display at the Grand Gallery. The exhibition includes scenes depicting things Bahamians by Chantal Baffle and Sheldon Saint. They are both celebrating 20 years in the field of art, and all of the pieces are in honor of the country's 40th anniversary of independence. The joint exhibition was launched on Friday night at the Grand Lupin Resort. Baffle is happy with the response from the community. Tonight we are celebrating the Bahamas with flamingos, natural treasures, with a tribute to Mr. Bowen, who is a national treasure, who signed the Constitution of the Bahamas, and uh, I'm Chantal Bethel, and Sheldon Saint, who's my colleague, has some wonderful watercolors of life in the Bahamas. After tonight, well, the show will stay on for about two weeks. And we have invited some of the school children to come in and we will talk to them, especially the young budding artists. Sheldon Saint is just as elated with the level of support from the community. He said he would also like to see more young people involved in art. I do believe that the turnout is absolutely amazing. Um, the support from the uh, collectors here in Grand Bahama is fabulous. We, we, we love the fact that they did come out to support us, to support uh, this uh, vision that we had, that we sat down together for several months and discussed, and it is just absolutely amazing that they're here tonight. I hope that a lot of the students would be inspired by what we have here on display. We do have quite a bit of um, our national symbols on display for them to view, um, like the, uh, um, the yellow elder, the flamingo, the, the blue marlin, the ligdom vitae, and quite a bit of the scenes from in and around Grand Bahama as well. It was an unusual school day for the staff and students at Grace Christian Academy on Friday. Staff and students participated in Wacky Dress Up Day, where they were allowed to dress in any style or color they chose to. It was a hilarious sight as they proudly showcased their mixed match outfits. Principal Betty McCartney says Wacky Day is a unique event on the school's calendar, and while it's a fun time for everyone, it is also used as an educational tool to spark creativity in children. We have imagination. We're still with it. And um, I guess for the children, it's quite exciting 
It's quite inspirational. And you know, for me, I hope that out of it, you know, I'm always thinking something academic, they will be able to write some stories that could tell what we have done. It's just a fun time, just a fun time. You know, and we all try to get into the spirit um, so that the children can see that we can still be a part of them and not just stand off, you know. So we're having a good time today. Spanish and computer teacher Tamika Brown was excited about the annual event. I knew today was going to be a good day and we put on all our best clothes and we came out of the house and we were just so excited to see each other today. Um, the kids enjoy it. They not only get to come out in what they want to come out in, but since we're so tense with them most of the time in class and it's all about teaching and it's all about structure, they get to see that their teachers have a crazy side to them as well. So they enjoy it just as much as we do. Don't go away. We're Cato Light. Bring us up next with sports. Everybody, it's time for Sports and Ricardo Live on the Conk Man Triathlon and the Iron Kids Triathlon Hill on the weekend at Taino Beach. The Iron Kids was the afternoon treat, and I think you're going to enjoy this one. The Iron Kids Triathlon was a competitive and fun event for the junior triathletes. Young Lamar Taylor got a second win and took the speed through the finish line, and he also got the win. This year's field of athletes were stocked, and these are the future triathletes. They will be tough to beat in the future. Young athletes were not concerned about winning, but the thrill of competing, the swim, the bike, and the run. Lots of training went into the preparation for the Iron Kids, and these times turned in were pretty good. The parental support was awesome on Saturday. The cheers at the finish line was echoed over Taino Beach. Some of the smaller kids had some challenges, but the support helped them a lot. Walking was okay, just as long as you complete the race. Then some of the Iron Kids need a little nudge to get to the finish line. Way to go, Dad. The Iron Kids and the Iron Man was a grueling event for everyone, but the kids had some nifty stories. My race was good, but I know that I had gone too hard inside my swim, and I did good inside my bike. And all I just knew I had to do was go all out inside my run. At first, I was like really scared. My heart was beating. This is my second time doing it, but I was still a little scared because I saw the waves like going, and I didn't know if a shark was coming. So I was really scared at first, but then when I got really into it, I was like really excited. And then while I was doing it, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I did well. Earlier, I had a race, the Conk Man. And then I did well because I had to race older people and then I had to do this one. And then I had to run and then my legs were really tiring but I knew I had to do it and to get a medal. The weather was conducive for the adults and the kids. The parents also had a positive response to the race and this one. I was swimming, running and riding and the water was a little bit foggy. I couldn't actually see. The Iron Kids Triathlon was just as exciting as the Iron Man. For the kids, it was great. Future stars of tomorrow. Let's a quick look at your sports tonight. <laughs>